moose so what if i told you there is a way to get more color more contrast and more sharpness when taking pictures of motionless scenes and subjects in low light the secret to that is using in case you haven't guessed it a tripod now what's so great about using a tripod is that it allows us to get our hands off of the camera and in doing so we get sharper images with less image noise. And those two things really unlock the really beautiful photos that we can take in low light situations. Now, in this video, I wanna sort of demystify the whole world of tripods. So if you already have a tripod, great. There are gonna be some tips in this video that will help you out, especially when setting up your camera to get those tack sharp images when mounted to a tripod. And then at the very end, uh, I'll kind of point out some uh, recommendations when it comes to choosing a tripod that's right for you. Now, let's talk first about when to use a tripod. So anytime you are taking pictures of people, animals, or anything that has some movement to it, you really don't need a tripod. A tripod is more beneficial when you have a motionless subject or scene. So things like landscapes, architecture, food photography, product photography, those kinds of things lend itself really well to using a tripod. Now, the reason for that is because we're not reliant on the shutter speed freezing a fast moving subject. We can utilize any shutter speed we want. We can have a, a shutter speed as slow as 10 seconds and we're still gonna get a really sharp shot because we have things nice and stabilized on a rock steady tripod. Now, what I wanna also highlight is when using a tripod, there are a couple things that you're gonna to wanna to adjust in your camera. The first and probably most important thing is the ISO. Anytime you use a tripod, you get to set your ISO all the way down to 100. And in doing so, you're gonna retain all that color, all that contrast, and things are gonna stay nice and sharp and not get all muddied up with really high image grain or noise. Additionally, if you have a camera or lens that has image stabilization, you wanna make sure to turn that off. Your camera or lens doesn't know that you're mounted to a tripod, so it will continue to try to uh, compensate for movements that aren't there and can actually end up blurring the, sh the shot. So you wanna make sure and turn that off. Now, to illustrate these two things, what I wanna do is show you three examples that I took earlier today of a kitchen. So in this first photo, what I did is I set my ISO all the way down to 100. I then set the aperture to F14, and what this did is it lengthened the area in focus so that things are nice and sharp. And then in order to get the right amount of brightness, I had to slow down the shutter speed to two seconds. But you can see because I used a tripod, things are nice and sharp, there's no blurriness, and we've retained all the color and contrast and things look really good. Now, in this second shot, all I did was remove the camera from the tripod. I kept the settings exactly the same. And you can see here that there is a lot of camera shake. And the reason for that is there's just no way for me to hold the camera still for two seconds. Now in this third shot, I want to illustrate the settings you would have to use in hand holding the camera and eliminating camera shake. Now my focal length was set to 30 millimeters. So what I did is I chose a shutter speed of one over 30 in order to cancel out that camera shake. Now with my shutter speed set to one over 30, my aperture set to F14, 
In order to get the right amount of brightness, I had to increase the ISO all the way up to 3200. And you can see how things get really noisy and muddy and there's a loss of color and contrast and things just do not look good at all, especially when compared to that first shot. Okay, so let's talk about tripods and ones that I recommend. Now, what I don't wanna do here is rattle off like a bunch of model numbers because I don't wanna put you to sleep. So I'll link to some of my favorite tripods in the description below. But what I wanna do is sort of give you some bullet points to look for when buying a tripod for yourself. So if you're interested in taking pictures outdoors, say of landscapes or of architecture, I highly recommend picking up a very strong and sturdy tripod. This one here is super big. It's a carbon fiber, uh, heavy duty tripod, really tall, really thick. And what's great about a tripod like this is that it can stand up really well to heavy winds and heavy winds uh, can cause blurriness. It can actually move your camera ever so slightly and cause uh, camera shake, believe it or not. So in order to combat that, we, we need a really strong, sturdy tripod when shooting outdoors. Now, if most of your shots are indoors, say of food, interior shots, product photography, then you can use a much lighter, smaller, portable tripod and not have to worry about those outside elements. Now, when purchasing a tripod, they usually come in two forms. You'll find one where it's just the tripod legs and you have to purchase the contraption that goes on top of it separately. Or you can find packages that include both the contraption and the legs together. My recommendation usually is to buy them separate. And the reason is we wanna make sure we get a high quality contraption. I keep calling it contraption, that's probably the wrong word, but uh, the, the thing that we use to attach our camera to the tripod, we wanna purchase that separately because we want to first make sure that it's high quality, that it has the features that we're looking for separate from the actual legs themselves. Now, with regards to the legs, uh, in terms of the material, you'll find aluminum, plastic, carbon fiber. Uh, again, if you're shooting indoors, it doesn't really matter as much because you're not having to worry about um, vibration from wind or a nearby stream. So you can really use any type of, of tripod legs. Just find one that's within your budget. Now, where I would spend some money is in the device or contraption that you attach to your tripod. For me, over the many years of, of shooting, the, the device that I prefer using is something called a ball head. Now, you can kind of think of a ball head similar to a joint like in your arm. Uh, with a ball head, I can release the locking mechanism or switch, and it allows my camera to float around freely in any angle or position. And that's really beneficial when trying to compose your shot. You're not sort of limited to, to really restrictive movements. You can really move it in any direction. Uh, what's also nice about most ball heads is they have a panning function where you can release a knob <clears throat> and rotate the camera left or right. So it's great for taking panoramic shots and other things like that. So there you have it, a really sort of basic understanding of when to use tr a tripod, some of the adjustments that you can make to your camera and then some of my recommendations in terms of gear. If you guys have any other questions about tripods and how to use them and which ones I recommend, uh, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Uh, until next time, hope you guys have a great rest of the week. Happy shooting.